Bridget's Beret, written and illustrated by Tom Lichtenheld. Bridget was drawn to drawing. She liked to draw as much as other kids liked ice cream. Wanna lick? Not now, thanks. Gotta draw. Her favorite place to draw was outdoors. When she was outdoors, drawing all the things around her, Bridget felt like she was right where she belonged. She created many masterpieces. Some went on permanent exhibit. Others were only available for limited viewing. Of course, Bridget had lots of art supplies, but her most important art supply wasn't something to draw or paint with. It was a hat. Not just any old hat, but a big black beret, the kind of hat that lots of great artists wear. Before Bridget made any kind of art, she'd put on a beret and adjust it until it looked just right. It had to have that certain je ne sais quoi. She had no idea what that meant, but she knew all great artists needed it to make art. One day, just as Bridget was putting an inspired dash of purple on a cluster of flowers, a big gust of wind came along and lifted her beret right off her head. It caught the breeze and went sailing through the air like a kite. Unfortunately, this kite didn't have a string. All it had was a little girl running after it screaming, my beret, my beret. Before Bridget could even get over the fence, her beret was out of sight. She searched the neighborhood asking everyone if they had seen her beret. She filed a missing beret report. She even offered a reward, but it was no use. Bridget had lost her beret and with it, she was sure her ability to draw. She tried on all the other hats in the house to see if any of them would give her artistic inspiration, but she wasn't the least bit inspired by any of them. So Bridget gave up and did what any self-respecting artist would do. She cried and pouted and sulked and generally felt sorry for herself. Her friend Madeline invited her to draw, but Bridget said, I can't draw, I have artist block. I have blocks too, said Madeline, but I can still draw. A few days later, her little sister Jessie asked her, Bridget, would you please make a sign for our lemonade stand? I can't, said Bridget. I don't have my beret. But it's not a drawing. It's just a sign, said Jessie. Please. Well, okay, I'll make your sign, Bridget replied grumpily, but no drawing. Bridget got a big roll of paper, some paint and brushes, and began to make a sign. She couldn't help but notice that with a little bit of yellow paint, the O in the word lemonade could become a lemon, and it needed a little bump at the bottom, and a leaf, or two. And I'd better put a smiling face over here so everyone will know the girls at this lemonade stand are friendly. There were still some empty spaces on the sign. She filled those in with other shapes and colors that looked a lot like drawings. That's an okay sign, said Bridget but you'll need another one down at the corner to attract customers. And another one for the other corner. Before she knew it, Bridget was painting signs as fast as the girls could put them up. Pretty soon, every tree, telephone pole, and signpost in the neighborhood held one of Bridget's masterpieces. All the neighbors thought it was a wonderful art opening. They gathered around their refreshment table to discuss the paintings and how great it was that Bridget was able to make art again. Where is Bridget anyway, they wondered. She was right back where she belonged.